Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello, here we are again with Manny Pacheco, a forgotten Hollywood, our historian supreme. Supreme, I like that word. You would be one of the supremes. Am I... How about historian deluxe? Oh, <laughs> El Grande. A and... historian extraordinaire. And... Wow. No, no, that's my partner, John Coleman extraordinaire. Oh, I okay. see. Okay. Please don't be sharing your title. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Manny, um, you remember a while back we, we talked about the greatest year in movies. And as I recall, it was 1939. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Right. right and right. at that time, you mentioned that there are other years that people, including yourself, might consider as good for movies or better. What, right. what what are some of those other years, and why? Why would they be better than 1939? Well, it was know, a pretty fabulous year. This, I mean, let me just tell you that this comes up a lot on on Facebook chatter uh, on those on those Hollywood pages that I follow, and uh, I, it's amazing how somebody can make a case for, let's say, uh, 1972 or 1994, uh, 1940 before the war. Uh, for me, though. I have to say that my the other year that really stands out is 1962, and 62 was special. I don't know why it was special. I think I think that at at the time uh, we were going through uh, politically speaking, we were going through a Cold War with Russia. People were looking for a lot of escapism, entertainment. Movies have had fallen very comfortably into the attitude of making them bigger. So like with Cinerama, uh, you know cinematography or vista vision right. or something like that right. in a way to combat uh, the the um, the competition they had with television and um, we were very clear as to who the big stars were in in those days and and new stars happened to emerge but some of the bigger stars of 1962 that were very were very visible the years prior Marlon Brando Burt Lancaster Gregory Peck uh, and then there were some up and coming stars that were going to become, you know, very popular in a short period of time. Patty Duke comes to mind. And of course, Peter O'Toole, he became a major star in 1962. So I think the stars just aligned for 1962. And what happened is we ended up with great films, uh, any one of which could have won the best picture of the year, but only one could. And but it, it but it left us in its wake, a number of terrific films that we can talk about. Well, what was the Academy Award winner Best Picture for that year? Well, that year it was, it was of course, the great David Lean as director, and he was fresh off a five-year win uh, in 1957, a, a Bridge on the River Kwai, and, and he decided to put together this uh, great masterpiece on the life of T.E. Lawrence, better known yes. as Lawrence of Arabia. Lawrence of Arabia. So, yeah. when, and you, any... when you say that it won for the Best Oscar, is that the Oscar that was awarded in early 63? Yes. So you're talking about the films leading up to the uh, Kennedy assassination, which is what 62 always, you say 1962, and it's... Well, yeah, but the awards were given in April. Kennedy didn't right. die until November. Yeah, but you're right, because the next Academy Awards was going to be post-Kennedy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think 62 stands out for another reason before I get into the whole um, why Lawrence of Arabia is so good. And I don't want to forget this. 63 was such an inferior year for movies. I, if you look at 62 with Lawrence of Arabia and the following year, the winner is Tom Jones. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't match. I mean, if you had taken, let's say, for example, To Kill a Mockingbird from 62 and put it in 63, how does it not win the best picture of the year? You take right. The Longest Day and you move it to 63. How does that not win the best picture of the year? You take uh, 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 Birdman of Alcatraz or The Miracle Worker and you put it in 1963. How does it not win the best picture of the year? So all, so of those, yeah. all those titles were in 1962? Yes, and wow. more. I mean, wow. not, not just those, but there were even more than that. <laughs> I mean, let's start with Lawrence of Arabia. Let's work. Let's work our way down. Lawrence of Arabia was a magnificent uh, a film yeah. that was beautifully filmed, made a star of Peter O'Toole and Omar Sharif. 
But you had your typical classic actors as well, Alec Guinness, Alec Guinness and uh, Claude Rains and Arthur Kennedy and Anthony Quinn and Jack Hawkins and Anthony Quayle. I mean, just an all-star cast of great British and American actors all in one movie that was an absolute epic, wonderful score, terrific cinematography, and what a blast on the screen. I mean, any other year, I think Peter O'Toole would have earned his first Oscar right then and there, if not for the impeccable work of Gregory Peck in To Kill a Mockingbird. Right. You know, yeah. I have to tell you one thing about the Lawrence of Arabia. I, I admit it was a spectacularly well-crafted film. Okay, but that damn intermission. It was like <laughs> two well, they hours. Were I remember having time. seen it off of Times Square. It was in a big theater there, and uh, 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 my my now wife and I went there to watch the movie. And I was just by the by the intermission. I didn't know whether to go out the front door or come back for the second half. But it was so good. <laughs> I we came back. Hey. To the, but it was a. It's the longest film I think I've ever been in. I, imagine my, my chagrin when my parents took us on a Sunday to see a double bill, and that was one of the films. <laughs> oh, my Lord. <laughs> we get in there at one. We don't get out till nine. <laughs> yeah. Well, they got their money's worth. Yeah, we did. And then, of course, as I alluded to, To Kill a Mockingbird, you know, Harper Lee's um, one great masterpiece that she had written. It was, it was the talk of the, uh, of the nation. Yeah. Everybody followed Harper Lee uh, everywhere. She was friends with Truman Capote. I mean, she was the it girl, and now they're making a film. And all she ever had in her heart as she wrote the book was that Gregory Peck should play Atticus Finch. I mean, right there. I mean, and, and, and it happens. And, it, and yeah. she's alive to witness it, and she's young. And, and then you get Mary Batum as Scout, and, and, of course, a very young Robert Duvall as Boo Radley. I mean... It is such an allegory of childhood in the South of the 1930s, and it's beautifully crafted. It's it's elegant. It's a little bit scary in the way yeah. children see things as scary. And it, it is such such a wonderful, wonderful film. And add to that other sober classics like The Birdman of Alcatraz, which was just Burt Lancaster had followed uh, being miscast in, in Judgment in Nuremberg with... One of his great performances, um, the ever uh, popular Thelma Ritter played his mother. Uh, Telly Savalas is in the movie. It, it's it's another one of those great true stories like Lawrence of Arabia, where you end up with a, um, you you end up with a uh, with an actor playing somebody who actually lived. And uh, and then you go with the miracle worker, which is the true story of the, the the relationship between Helen Keller and her teacher, the nearly blind Annie Sullivan, played by Anne Bancroft and and of course uh, um, Patty Duke. And so you're you're telling real stories about people who are actually alive, and they're getting to see themselves on camera, as portrayed by other actors, and nobody's complaining, which tells you that these were really wonderfully crafted uh, movies with, with terrific performances. And Bancroft wins an Academy Award for Best Actress. Uh, Patty Duke wins an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. So just just great films. And again, there, there's even more to add to that. What do you, Manny, what do you suppose changed from 62 to 63? Why, did, why was 63 such, by comparison, so uh, lame? It happens. It, it just happens. I mean... I'm not saying there weren't good movies in 63. I just don't, I just think they pale in comparison to 62. The VIPs is a good movie with, with Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton, but it's not a great movie, and it's not as great a movie as R Richard Burton's next movie in 64 with Peter O'Toole and Beckett. Uh, right. There's It's a mad, 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 mad world, possibly the greatest comedy ever written but in 63, but at the time, comedies weren't winning uh, awards. But you, But you had... A great war epic in 62, like The Longest Day, which featured just about every actor imaginable. I mean, you had sure. John Wayne, Robert Mitchum, Eddie Albert. You had uh, uh, Richard, uh, Richard Beamer and, and, uh, and Sal Mineo and Rod Steiger and, and Henry Fonda. Uh, just an all-star cast. Uh, and, and they're retelling the D-Day the operation from start to finish. And they did a 
spectacularly accurate job. I mean, minus the, the star power, but the, the actual events were, uh, were, were pretty accurate. And I had a chance to visit Europe, and I had a chance to visit the, the places they were talking about. And it, it seems to me like they filmed on location because they, they looked identical. I mean, it, it was that good. So the set designs were just absolutely immaculate. And, of course, one of the great all-time musicals came out in 1962 and probably could have won the best picture of the year in, in most other years, and that's The Music Man, with a performance of a lifetime. How he did not even get nominated for Best Actor is beyond me, and that's Robert Preston. He yeah. was just terrific, and it was a perfect performance, and most people spend their Fourth of, Ju Fourth of July's now every year enjoying the music man since it's a fourth of july classic yeah yeah so you now, there was a another case. Movie, yeah there's another movie i want to mention i'd be remiss if i didn't and that, that was the political thriller and um it turned out to be very um prophetic and i think art i think you might have alluded to this earlier so i'm going to mention it now and that was the manchurian candidate mm. oh, 1962 yeah. frank sinatra and uh, 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 Angela Lansbury, who ended up being nominated for an Academy Award. Uh, it, it's such a great movie that foretold the assassination of a political candidate. And um, it was very, very popular, except when uh, in 1963, when Kennedy was assassinated, the movie was shelved, and it was shelved for decades mm, yeah. because of, of its subject matter. It was just too close to home. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. You know, you've made the case for... Uh, 62. <laughs> I mean, I, it's a stunning array of, of uh, films that came out. Well, I didn't even I didn't even talk about the update to Mutiny on the Bounty with Marlon Brando and Trevor Howard. Oh, for sure. Billy Budd Billy Bud came out uh, that same year, and that was a, a, a great little film. Uh, yeah, the, 62 was just amazing. I mean, the the the, the quality of of the filmmaking and the acting. So I mean, we were so blessed to get these great, great films in one year, and and those years don't come often. Maybe '63 wasn't as bad as all that. Maybe it's the, the question we should be asking is why is it so rare a, a certain year gets to be so mm -hmm. good? Maybe yeah. that's the question we should be asking. Well, we're asking the right person, Manny Pacheco. <laughs> and we'll ask you that same question again on on another occasion, Manny. Thank you. Be happy to. Thank you so much. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.